How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. East with Jim Valley on Saturdays, and Sundays, 6 p.m. with me, Andrew Zarian. Happy Royal Rumble Fallout Day. I guess that's what you're going to call this. I'm exhausted. I, I can't believe <laughs> how long these shows are getting, how late they're going. Uh, we saw a lot of stuff happen at the Royal Rumble this year. Cody got crowned the winner of the Men's Royal Rumble. Rhea Ripley, the winner of the Women's Royal Rumble. We're going to break all of this down for you. And what does this mean? You know, I I watched the show in its entirety. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. When it gets late, you know, the age is catching up to me. I don't know about you guys, but doing staying after... Midnight watching wrestling for hours and hours and hours. Uh, it gets a little exhausting, but I did get to enjoy it with my kids. The kids got to see the men's rumble. My daughter tried to stay off of the women's. It didn't work out. Uh, I had it. I put it on this morning for them to finish up the show, but a lot of stuff happened here and we're going to break down all of it. And what does it mean? And where do we go from here? And, uh, you know, how does Cody is Cody the guy to dethrone Roman? That's the big story here because the Sami Zayn stuff got so good uh, so fast where that's the prime focus for a lot of people. And it's not Cody after returning from injury. We're going to break all of this down for you guys and a whole lot more here on the show. I also want to get your input. I have a couple of questions here at the end of the show I'm going to get to. But when we come back, we're going to continue this and a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sunday with me, Andrew Zarian, Sports Byline. I guess we'll begin with the beginning of the show. You know, um, leading up to this, there was a lot of speculation as to what begins this pay-per-view. The Men's Rumble began the pay-per-view this year. It went one hour and 11 minutes and 39 seconds. This possibly is the longest Royal Rumble that they've done. MG, our producer, is that true? I think it I is, think right? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty I mean, sure traditional. Traditional Rumble. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Cody won the 30-man Royal Rumble. He came out at number 30. Gunther entered in at number one. He broke the record. He was in there for a very, very long time. Let me find my notes here. He was in there for one hour, 11 minutes, and 10 seconds. He was eliminated by Cody. He, he stood the test of time. I mean, he did an Iron Man. Uh, I think he might be the first Iron Man to come in at number one and stay more than an hour. Uh, unbelievable performance by Gunther. That was a big story here. Gunther's performance to me stood out tremendously. After Gunther, you had Sheamus, The Miz, Kofi Kingston, which Kofi for the second year in a row uh, was not able to do that high spot, you know, where he... You know, last year, I believe, he tried to jump on the barricade, on the on the railing, and his feet touched. And this year, he was going to do the chair spot again, and the chair totally flipped over, and he crashed and burned. Michael Cole did his best to recover that and say, you know, oh, but, uh, there's only one foot on the ground, one is on the chair. But no, both feet touched, and he was eliminated. Johnny Gargano followed him. Uh, Xavier Woods, Karrion Cross. And now we got the big guys in the ring, right? Karrion comes in. We got Chad Gable, obviously. Drew McIntyre, Santos Escobar, Angelo Dawkins, Brock Lesnar, which really didn't do much. He came in and was immediately eliminated by Bobby Lashley after a couple of minutes. And then Lashley was eliminated by Seth Rollins a couple of minutes after that. Baron Corbin, Seth Rollins, Otis, Rey Mysterio did not come out. Domina came out with his mask on, so the story there is that Ray got taken out by Judgment Day. A lot of people were confused over this. I was also a little confused over this because I, I thought this would have been an opportunity for them to put somebody else in. I was like, ah, here's a secret guy. Here's the guy that's going to come in for Ray that we don't know. Did not happen. Dominic Mysterio, number 18. Man, he's grown on me tremendously. Dominic, I I'm really liking this Dominic. I don't know about you guys, but they've done a very good job of rehabbing him. He was kind of getting stale, and people were tired of him, but this whole new uh, prison dom is doing great. Elias followed Dominic at number 19. Finn Balor came out at number 20. Booker T, 21. That was the big 
Legend Act. He was eliminated by Gunther. He wasn't in there too long. Damian Priest, Montez Ford, Edge, number 24. He was taken out by Judgment Day. The Edge story continued on the outside, where they all brawled. Rhea Ripley came out, started attacking Edge. And here comes Beth Phoenix, which did not appear. She did not appear in the Women's Rumble, but she was there. So, you know, this is going to lead to something between Beth Phoenix and Rhea Ripley. They could do something at Elimination Chamber. They could do something on Raw. They could do something on SmackDown. They could do a lot with this, but they're going back to that story, which I'm curious how that's going to play out for Rhea Ripley and WrestleMania. We'll get to that in a few moments. After Edge was Austin Theory, Omos, Braun Strowman, Ricochet, number 29, Logan Paul, with an unbelievable spot with Ricochet. I mean, the entire intention of that was to get mainstream media to cover it, and which they did. New York Post immediately had it on the front page of their website while the show was happening. TMZ, I'm sure TMZ Sports is going to have it, and everybody else will cover this. Really magnificent. I mean, they, they essentially what they did, they did a springboard off the ropes and collided midway, you know, stomach to stomach. It was very impressive looking from that far shot. And after 29, here comes Cody Rhodes in his return after months and months of being out for the chest hair and the, I mean, it was just gruesome. He comes in number 30, final two in the ring were Gunther and Cody. And they give them some time. They went, what was it, seven, eight, nine minutes, MG? Uh, Seven minutes. Seven minutes. They gave them some time. And, you know, they went back and forth here trying to convince you that Gunther has a chance. Uh, And Cody eliminated Gunther. And Cody is the winner of the men's 2023 Royal Rumble. One hour, one minute, and 30 seconds for this. So very, very, uh, you know, listen, I enjoy the Rumble. Some rumbles are way better than others. 2020, in my opinion, could possibly go down as the best storytelling that they've ever done. I think the payoff fell apart, obviously. I think we all know what the world was going through in time of WrestleMania. So we did not get to see that big uh, moment with Lesnar and Drew the way that it should have been done. However, you know, they still told a great story in that rumble. And the thing that I loved about that is that people were so angry midway through that rumble when Lesnar was eliminating anybody, everybody. And then you were like, okay, aha, I got it. Uh, overall, I was fine with it, you know, and I watched it with my kids. And this is really the first Royal Rumble I got to experience with them like this. And it was a ton of fun. This match was a lot of fun. Would I say it's, it's one of the best? No, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I, I do need to rewatch it, though. In a couple days, I'll rewatch it and I'll kind of reevaluate but you know it's always a fun match it's always fun to see I just don't know where this stands now big story here is and we're going to get to it at the you know in the next segment the Sami Zayn stuff has overshadowed everything this company has done and it's going to be a telling story here following this match we got yes yes sir interrupt you but no um, you could interrupt me as much as you want <laughs> not not but the uh ricochet uh logan paul spot we could probably talk about that yeah no i i, I if you were listening we did <laughs> you got your one chance right. listen i gave you that one chance and i said interrupt me as much as you want now you know what i've taken that card away you can no longer interrupt me <laughs> no man i i thought it was cool and you know the purpose is the mainstream crossover here and you could tell he's going to be involved in WrestleMania in some capacity. The story, though, is the Seth Rollins moment because Seth eliminated him. Seth eliminated Logan Paul. So maybe that's the WrestleMania match. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I think that's a great mainstream crossover. Uh, Seth and Becky were in that Applebee's commercial. Did you see that? Which was heinous. I absolutely hated that commercial. I, I couldn't believe that that was a thing. <laughs> That, How, that shirt looked like it was from your wardrobe. That shirt could be from my wardrobe. You know what? I think I wore that shirt to Sound Factory in 2002. For all you New Yorkers, you might get the reference here. Pitch Black match came up after this. Bray Wyatt and LA Knight, they went five minutes. 
this was bonkers. You know, visually, I have to tell you, it was really cool to see. Um, this was straight out of WWE 2K20, whatever series game you want to pull out. The create a wrestler mentality has hit the reality now. That was, I mean, that was everything out of a bonkers create a wrestler. Some kid made him upload it to YouTube. Bray looked gnarly, man. Bray looks cool with that. Uh, weird match. Weird concept. The ending was bizarre with Uncle Howdy plummeting to his demise. He entered, he, I guess he took, he took LA Knight to hell with him. He, he what he, they did, they went up to the ramp and they had this section where LA Knight jumped off of, I guess, whatever, a balcony. Uh, not LA Knight, I'm so sorry. Uh, Uncle Howdy jumped off of the balcony or whatever, the, the, the ramp onto LA Knight. LA Knight goes through the floor along with Uncle Howdy that missed by a mile. And all you see is L.A. Knight's feet like he's the Wicked Witch. Just curled up. I have no idea where the hell they go from here. I have no idea. I, I you know, and when we come back from our break, I kind of want to touch on this problem with Bray because he does these, you know, wacky, cool, ghostly promos. And then the match, you give them this weirdo match and it never executes. So we're going to talk about that, obviously, because I want to spend some time. And you know, what does this mean for LA Knight? I like seeing him in a singles position. I like seeing him getting something. The dude is impressive. He has, I mean, he's great on the mic. He's good in the ring. He has the look. It's just a, a different era. It's a different time where you need a little bit more, I guess. We're going to come back from break and talk about this and a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition, post-Royal Rumble Wrestling Observer Live. When we left off, we were talking about Bray Wyatt and what does this mean and where do you go from here? You know, the story is whenever you ask somebody there, they, they, they tell you like, no, listen, you got to wait and let this pay off. There's something more here. This is just the piece to get us to where they're going. I have no idea where they're going. I mean, it's gotten very convoluted with the storytelling. Uh, is it visually really cool? Yeah, 100%. It's visually really impressive. Bray coming out and the lights and Uncle Howdy and the possession of Alexa Bliss, which we'll talk talk about. But I, I this is this is falling. I, I thought the Fiend was done a little better than this, because I, I. But you know what? Maybe we should let it play out, right, and see where we go. But I don't know what this means for LA Knight. You know, it's a high position uh, spot he's in. It's better than what he was in with the maximum male models or whatever it was called. Much better position than changing his name to uh, whatever it was. Dupree. What was it, MG? Max Dupree. Max Dupree. There you go. Max Dupree. Terrible. Terrible name. But uh, we'll see what happens here. Following this, we got... <laughs> Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. They went seven minutes and 32 seconds. You know, bad positioning on this match, uh, on this card. I, 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 I don't think people wanted this match. I think people just want to go straight into the Rumble and they want to see the, the Roman stuff. But they gave him seven minutes. Bianca won. After the match, Alexa's on the floor, and here comes Uncle Hattie with that video package, essentially telling her she's not in control, and uh, the possession begins, I guess. It is so weird, you know, that they're, they're really toying with this Alexa Bliss stuff. I mean, eventually, you're gonna, she's going to join the crew, but they're taking their time, which, you know, we complain about this all the time, that they rush through things. Now they're giving it time, but I don't know if they're giving it, it it's us not being patient or the story is just not making sense but maybe that's just me it I was might be a little too direct direct too directional this it doesn't it doesn't it's not going anywhere i think that might be the biggest issue that may be the biggest mm -hmm. issue we'll see mm -hmm. following this we got the women's royal rumble rhea ripley comes in at number one Liv morgan number two dana brooke emma Shayna Baszler, Bailey. The big story was damage control and their dominance in this match. BFAB comes in for a few minutes. Roxanne Perez, Dakota Kai, EO Sky, Natty, Candice LeRae, Zoe Stark. 
Zia Lee, Becky Lynch, Tegan Knox, Asuka, but Asuka came out as her dark Kana character. So she's getting a little bit aggressive here. So she's getting spooky. Which got a huge pop, by the way. Huge pop. Yeah, she got a big reaction, which, by the way, good for her. She's fantastic. She's great. She's one of my favorites. Piper Niven, she got her name back. Thank God. No more dewdrop. And you know what was hysterical? Pat McAfee. Uh, I missed that in the first segment. Pat McAfee is back, right? Pat McAfee was on color commentary. Pat, you, you noticed. You saw. I mean, Pat did really good, too. But Pat, you noticed Pat was not keeping up with the product. There were names he knew nothing about. He, there were character changes he knew nothing about. Uh, th this was a big moment for him because he kept saying, you know, like he was shocked that it's Piper Niven and not Dewdrop. Think, you know, good for them. They brought her name back because that was there the was dumbest a name. Lot, there, there was a lot of inside jokes on commentary that was popping me all night. A lot of inside jokes. It, and, it Michael was, Cole it kept it fresh. It kept yeah, it you could tell Michael sure. Cole really, really enjoys working with Pat McAfee. I, I mean, he said it. He has said that it's revitalized his career and it's given him this new life on co commentary. Uh, and you could tell Michael Cole very much enjoys working with him because he's so unpredictable and he's out there and it's funny for him. You know, he, he's able to have this back and forth. Uh, following Tamina was Chelsea Green, which broke a record. Shortest, shortest uh, stay in the Rumble. She came in and went out. Zelina Vega followed her. Raquel Rodriguez, they gave her some time, which was nice to see. Mia Yim followed. Lacey Evans. Michelle McCool was the big surprise. She was sitting watching the Rumble, and they hit her music, and she just hopped over the barricade and went into the match. She, she did her, do a... Gave her uh, coat to her daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gave her coat to her daughter. Me. Yeah, uh, and... You know what I want her to do? Why can't, you know, I I'm waiting for them to embrace the Undertaker stuff with her. Maybe she could come in and become the Undertaker. But she did do a great Styles Clash. <laughs> Which was <laughs> interesting. Uh, I think they said it was a phenomenal. They're like, oh, that move was phenomenal. They didn't call it a Styles Clash, but they called it phenomenal. Uh, that, which that was her move for a long time. Indy Hartwell followed Sonya Deville, Shotzi, Nikki Cross, and number 30, the big surprise, the return of Nia Jax. Nia's back for all the Nia fans. I know that the Wrestling Observer audience was thrilled to see her back. I could see it in the chat room how excited people were. <laughs> but Nia's back now also. So, you know, all these releases over that pandemic, a lot of them are, are slowly returning back. I, you know what was interesting about Nia? People, when she left, uh, there was a lot of negativity, and then people thought that she would end up in AEW, which I never saw that happening. I never saw that. The winner of the Rumble, Rhea Ripley, she lasted one hour and one minute. She was very dominant. She looked great. I, you know, I, Some people said it was predictable. Some people thought that they, this was going to happen. Listen, sometimes predictability is the only way to go if it makes sense, so... Whether or not she faces Charlotte or she faces Bianca, uh, we'll see. Or the title can change, you know? It could be someone else. But I think this is a good showing for Rhea Ripley. I'm glad that she's in this position. And I hope that she has a really, really dominant run as one of the champions for the women's division. I'm a big fan of hers. What can I say? Humongous fan of hers. But, you know, we got to look at this roster. And it was very telling uh, for both the men's and the women's. There was something lacking. Obviously, the legends were lacking from this one. And you can't go to that well often. But, you know, something that was really lacking was in years past, up until, you know, you had Johnny Gargano show up from NXT or Tommaso Ciampa show up or Adam Cole show up. You had this, like, element of surprise with the NXT, like the top-tier NXT talent. And especially on the men's side, it is it does not exist. It, it, like, to get a reaction, I mean, other than Braun Breaker, who else would they have brought from NXT that would have gotten this, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're in the Rumble response. And Gargano meant nothing in this men's Rumble. There, it really, and, and a couple years ago, it was such a nice treat. Everybody knew he wasn't going to win. But it was still a nice surprise to see him perform in there. And then you got these, like, little dream matchups. 
That did not exist in this Rumble, and that may have taken away from the men's Rumble, in my opinion. The lack of focus on top-tier talent on NXT, you know, they're developmental. They're building. I, I expect NXT to change this year. Within the next 18 months, I, I expect there to be a big change with NXT, with different talent coming in, uh, non-developmental talent coming in, you know, more established names from the indies or wherever else. But it was very much lacking here. And it took away something for me. You know, how many times are we going to see Dolph Ziggler in the same spot in the Rumble? Was there any excitement here with the talent in there? Baron Corbin. Okay, Baron Corbin's in there. It, it was a very by-the-books Rumble. Now, I'm not saying it was bad. I just felt that it was very standard. And last year's wasn't great either. I, I rewatched the last three years, the last couple days here. Last year's was okay. It was fine. And that was another one. Not a lot of stuff happening. It was... It was a decent rumble. I Do you think, think in, Andrew, that... Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you think, Andrew, that, that Cody should have been a surprise? Because I think that was one of the things... I, I don't people know. People wanted more surprises. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a great argument. I know a lot of people wanted Cody to be a surprise. I think they they could have done a better job at telling you he wasn't going to be in. But then maybe they feared there would be this rejection of Cody. I want to, I'm going to ask this week, now that the Rumble's passed, I could get a direct answer as to why they did it. The answer of there was more surprises, I think that was more for Edge than anything else. Edge was a surprise, and who else? Nobody else, really, in the men's Rumble. Uh, But Booker, yeah, but Booker, he's not going to do much in there. Right. So, other than Booker and Edge, there wasn't any big surprises. Uh, Edge would have been the big one, but Edge really, he was in and out. You didn't tell a story with this. There was a lot of guys they left off, like Bronson Reed. I thought he was going to be in it. You know, Bronson Reed would have been a great addition in here. You could have done something cool with him, but he wasn't in it. So, you know, it's a lot of moving parts. I understand. It's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be perfect. But the story was Judgment Day's dominance with Edge, Edge and Judgment Day, Cody coming back, Gunther's uh, marathon of a performance. You had, and then Logan Paul and Seth, you built that up. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley, they set that up. So they did get their job done with setting up these future stories. But I don't know. It it was just the element of surprise or that, oh my gosh, moment did not exist for me. Not saying it was bad. I think Cody was the right person to win this. I, I don't think it should have been someone else. And we'll talk about it in the next segment. But the, now the story is, okay, how do you get Cody to Roman within the next three months and you make it that people are invested? People want to see Cody win. How do you make that happen with the Sami Zayn uh, storyline overshadowing everything and anything this company is doing right now? That's why I put it for the next segment. Because I know that we got to spend some time on this bloodline stuff. Very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff going on here. But when we get back to the main event, Sami Zayn uh, in that predicament. We got Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens in the main event. This went on very, very late. I had to rewatch it this morning. But when we get back, we're going to continue this and a whole lot more. Here on Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Sunday edition. Royal Rumble edition. We spoke about the men's rumble. We spoke about the women's rumble. We spoke about the blackout match. Pitch black match. We spoke about Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss. It's the main event now. Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens. This was a big deal. And that, the attendance, by the way, was announced 51,338. Huge audience. I mean, I don't know if they had 50,000 50, in that building, but I mean, it was packed. They like that Alamo Dome, and that, that building is a dump. It is old. It is. I know that they get a great deal on it, so it's worth it for them. It's. Is it a destination city, though? I guess it is. They're doing great with it, people. I know so many people travel for the Rumble. 
story here was what will happen? I don't think anybody anticipated Kevin Owens to win, but there was a spot here, okay? Kevin Owens went for, did, did you see this spot? He went for like a a backspring off of the, the rope and he, and he botched it. He slipped. He slipped. He did. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to know how masterful, it. you want to know how masterful Roman Reigns is as a performer. I want you to find that clip. Okay. Watch what Roman does. So he slipped, but Roman moved out of the way because he anticipated that he wasn't going to make it. And he was able to kind of, move in a way that kind of made it look less of a of a slip and more like ah you see how masterful roman is he moved out of the way so it confused it confused kevin owens well i think that the spot was he was going to move anyway he was going to move anyway did, but because they redid the spot and he did move so or maybe uh, it would have been the second spot he would have hit the first one and then he would have missed the second one you know they could have done that also be. but uh great performance by both of them roman is fantastic uh, the end was, it was a, it was a, a group attack on Kevin Owens. They handcuffed him. They beat him up and Roman was going to hit him with the chair and Sammy interferes, convinces him not to do it. He hands the chair to Sammy and what does Sammy do? He hits Roman Reigns to save his best friend. That reaction from the audience was unbelievable super loud they took their time with it they really did. oh yeah they, they bled it out and yeah and you know what and i'm like and i'm looking at the clock i'm like guys i'm loving this but i gotta do a show i gotta do we're live pal it's 12 30 almost i gotta get on the air um i they did take their time and they did tell a nice story and this is now the the demise of the bloodline and Something that I did not see happening in the story was Jay Uso turning his back on the bloodline and leaving. He did not want to participate in this attack on Sami Zayn, which I don't know where that story is going to go. If, you know, if Jay is leaving the bloodline, if this is some sort of swerve where, you know, this leads to the Usos versus Sami and Kevin for the titles at WrestleMania, which I think that that's where it should be. But before we get to WrestleMania, we got to get to Elimination Chamber. And there's a number of elements here. One would be the Elimination Chamber match for the men. Or, or women, whoever. Let, let's talk about the men now. Elimination Chamber for the men. It's in Montreal. You got Sami Zayn and, 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 and Roman Reigns going up against each other. He's going to become the biggest babyface in that company that day. There's no denying that Sammy will turn into, I mean, ways he will surpass any pop Brian Danielson got in his peak. You're in Montreal, which is a really hot wrestling city. You're, it's a really hot wrestling feud against the biggest guy in the company. It's going to make him. I don't know how they get him out of here. I don't know what they do to make this work for everybody, but they have a plan. Sammy has become this beloved babyface. It's a waste if you don't capitalize on this. It, it is a total waste if you don't capitalize on this. There's no denying that they've created a star, a, a crossover star. I mean, from last year to today. And he, he even said it. What did Roman say? He's like, if it wasn't for me, you'd be in a jackass match or something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so mm. I mean, going one year out, but by the way, that jackass match was great. I mean, and that's why Sammy Zayn is so good. Everybody, everybody that knows Sammy, anybody that I know that knows Sammy says he is one of the funniest guys, hysterical. He he's really smart. He's I mean, just really total package, really. He just he's not a big jacked up dude like Roman. Very likable. He overthinks, from what I've heard, he overthinks things, and he gets very intricate with what he's trying to... Yeah, and you know what? Everything um, he does works. His story. Last year's Royal Rumble, he was doing that conspiracy storyline. Remember that, where there was a conspiracy against him? And he was yeah, getting beat up by Johnny Knoxville? Yeah, and, and now they actually figured out how to transition that into this. Yeah, which, they did a great job. You know, 
there's no such thing as as no rehab in pro wrestling. You could rehab anybody into becoming a big star if you do it right. It really it's a good showing of this. Now, I, I was talking to Rich, my my uh my co-host on Mat Men, for those who don't know. And we were talking about this just yesterday. I was like, you know, when he was in NXT, when Sammy was in NXT, and you know, Danielson got the title and they put the title on AJ, and you were seeing, you know, other non-traditional WWE guys having these titles, I could have told you, I would have said, you know, Sami Zayn winning the World Heavyweight Championship on the main roster is a possibility. And then it came to the main roster, and I never felt that he could become World Heavyweight Champion in that company. Now, I could see them doing it. Now, will he hold that title a long time? Will he be a one-year champion? I don't see that happening, but three months, a couple months, go into a program. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's the greatest honor any professional wrestler could have. If you're a kid that grew up on this thing, like a, like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and any of these guys, how is, not, how is that not the greatest moment in your career? Whether or not it's three months or not, you are the man for that moment. Can they do it? I don't know if they'll do it. But this is where we're going now. Roman is the champion. Cody won the, the, the Royal. I was going to say King of the Ring. I don't know why. I, every time I have said Royal Rumble, my, I have, I, King of the Ring is trying to come out. Maybe they're doing King of the Ring this year. I think they might be. Uh, maybe my, I'm putting it in there in the universe that it's going to happen. But, you know, you got this big story here. I'm excited to see where they go. Monday's going to be interesting with Cody. Here's the problem. There's no Dwayne. I think Triple H said the what did he he say during that scrum about the rock? That 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 he that said ship it is just sailing. It doesn't look like it's yeah, it didn't look like it was in the cards. It doesn't year. look like it's in the cards this year. So, so take that for what it's worth. Take that for what it's worth. So now Who's filling that legend spot? I mean, it's quite possibly Austin, from what everybody's talking about, to take that night two or night one spot. If they don't get out of the Sami Zayn Roman stuff in a really good way, this is going to be a detriment for Cody. And, I, I mean, I, I know that some people said that he was getting booed. I didn't hear the boos. I, I you know, I, again, it's a very jaded audience. For these things you know it's a, it's a little different for Royal Rumble than it is for Monday Night Raw or any other show but you know here's the thing right you're in Montreal for that next show yeah the main event is probably going to be Co uh, Sammy and Roman or maybe not I don't know but let's say it is if Cody is wrestling that night will he be booed in Montreal when he comes out because people feel that it's more deserving for Sammy to have this I think it's a possibility, and you got to figure out a way to not for that not to happen. <laughs> if they Cody's the guy, one good thing. What they did do one good thing uh, last night. They did that, and the pre-show or in the kickoff show, they did that angle where Roman said, "You're going to be my by my hip all night to get him out of the basically rumble." Yeah, saying, yeah, basically saying this is a way to say you're not going to be in the rumble. So I think I thought that was kind of clever and and helped not not have expectations that he was going to be in the rumble. Yeah. I, you know, I think they did a good job at that. I don't think people were upset that Sammy wasn't in the rumble. I think they, you know, sometimes you got to let the story play and this is the only way that the story is going to end. I, I, I don't know, you know, what people expected to have, you know, I don't know what people's expectation was. People were saying, well, they just ended their best storyline that they've had. No, they, no, they haven't. They just entered another phase in it. You can't continue this forever. It, it, you're, you can't run it till it run its, runs its course because then people aren't going to care for the payoff by that point. This thing is still fresh in people's minds and they're very into it, so they're committed to this story. And you're going to continue it the next whatever months, six months or three months, whatever. There's a lot of moving parts here, guys. I'm very curious to see how this falls down, falls out. But tomorrow we'll find out on Monday where they're going. Cody, I'm sure, is going to do an emotional promo where he's going to cry. Uh, and, you know, the story is going to be he wants to achieve that one thing that his father never did and his brother never did. And that this is his opportunity. He's already surpassed it. You know, neither one ever won the Rumble. 
Neither one uh, were in a main event at WrestleMania. And he is, you know, he is the guy. He's a chosen guy right now. By the way, those pedigree spots were very cool with Seth. I very much enjoy that they both use the pedigree now. I, I think it's a nice little, like, wink and a nod at everybody about what's going on, considering uh, Seth was Hunter's guy and Cody left and he took that shot against Hunter when he went to AEW. The throne so, spot. <laughs> yeah, the throne spot. I hope they do that at WrestleMania. I hope he comes out with that freaking throne. That'll be really cool if they do that. Maybe they can. Little little uh, throwback for you. But a lot of moving parts here, man. And we're going to find out on Monday what's going on. Because they have to explain. There's a lot of gaps in this story. And they got to fill in the holes. Imagine Kevin Owens turns on, on Sammy. And he says, you stole the spotlight from me. And he joins the bloodline. Man, really WCW booking there. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait till they... By the way, WCW booking, this Bray Wyatt stuff was WCW booking. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes here on Sports Byline. What did you guys think of this show? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs in the middle? Thumbs to the side? It was fine. It was okay. Very long, though. I, I, I'm going to say that again. Would it, would, it, would it hurt to start it at 7 o'clock on a Saturday? Nobody's doing anything. It's already a paid show. You're going to watch it in replays anyway. I don't know how many people stayed up till midnight to watch this thing. I faded away. I was in and out. I was, I was trying my best, and I had to go do a show. It was very difficult for me. But that's the age showing here. For people who don't know, I'm actually 90 years old. I'm on some trial to look like this. I take a pill every day. My insides are 90. My outsides are, are, are 38. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens here. But Monday is going to be interesting. We also have AEW this week. There's a lot of moving parts there on AEW. I actually had a couple notes here. Did you watch, by the way, did you watch uh, the tribute show? for on the ring of honor tribute show mg because you know what it was three hours and you know what they did a great job at honoring jay briscoe uh, i watched parts of it i had i didn't watch all of it but i watched parts of it i watched the like a lot of the uh where they were the interviews with everybody talking about him i watched those those are really really emotional yeah very emotional stuff and uh kudos to warner on the reverse course on this ridiculous ban on the briscoes Totally a boneheaded move by them, but they, they realized due to the backlash, and this is one of those cases where, you know what, speaking up and, 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 and communicating worked. So good on them. Guys, that's it. We're done here. But I'll be back next week with another live Wrestling Observer Live. See you all next time, guys. Take care.